Welcome to the Complete Discipleship Evangelism 48 Lesson Course by Andrew Womack and Don Crow. Level 1, Lesson 9 Identity in Christ, Part 1 by Andrew Womack. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The phrase in Christ is a terminology that is used over 300 times in the New Testament always referring to a vital union relationship with God. Once that takes place, you become a new creature. Some translations actually say a new creation. This leads to a critical issue that I believe is imperative to understanding your new identity in Christ. It did not take place in the physical realm. It isn't talking about your physical body, saying that it completely changes, that your looks change. If a person was fat before they were saved, they'll still be fat afterward, unless they go on a diet. It also isn't talking about your mental or emotional part, what most people consider to be the real them. If you were not too smart before you were saved, you won't be too smart after you're saved, but you will still have a lot of the same memories and thoughts. There is a third part, and according to this scripture, by process of elimination, it has to be the part of us that is changed, our spirit man. A scripture that verifies this is 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23 where Paul is praying for the Thessalonians. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. This passage shows that we have a spirit, soul, and body. The body part is very obvious. It is the part of us that is seen, our outward person. We all recognize that there is another part beyond that, our emotional, mental part, which scripture calls the soul. We know that even though a person may not physically touch you, they can touch you by their words, either in a positive or negative way. Most people are in tune with the physical and soulish parts, but according to scripture, there is another part, which is the spirit. The spirit is the part of us that is changed and is new after salvation. It is actually the life-giving part. James 2 verse 26 says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. That shows that it is the spirit that actually breathes life into our physical bodies. It is where our life comes from. In Genesis chapter 2, when God created Adam and Eve, Adam's body was complete, but then God breathed into him the breath of life. This word breathe in Old Testament Hebrew was the exact same word that we use for breath and it is translated spirit in other places. God created the physical body and the soulish person of Adam, but then he breathed into him the breath of life and he became a living soul. The spirit is the part of us that gives life. Prior to salvation, before a person made a total commitment of their life and the Lord coming into them, the spirit within them was dead. Ephesians 2 verse 1 says, And you he made alive, who were dead 
in trespasses and sins. We know we were alive before we were born again, but the word dead is speaking of spiritually. Death in the Bible doesn't mean ceasing to exist, as some people today think of it. It literally means separation. When a person physically dies, they don't cease to exist. The Bible teaches that they go immediately into the presence of God or into the presence of hell. The soul and spirit continue to live, but there is a separation from the physical body which dies and decays. When Genesis 2 verse 17 says, For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die, it didn't mean that they would die physically, but spiritually, that they would become separated from God. The spirit, the part that God breathes into us, which actually gives life and motivation, became separated from God's supernatural life, his holy and complete life. What the Bible calls Zoe life, or life in an absolute or abundant sense. Man then began to degenerate. He still functioned, but he was functioning independent, separated from God. That is really what causes all the problems in our lives, all of our emotional stress. When a person comes to the Lord, they receive a new spirit and are born again, which is the terminology Jesus used in John 3 verse 5. In the same way, man is born physically with a spirit, soul and body. When he is born again, he receives the spirit of Christ. Galatians 4 verse 6 says, And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. God literally places His Spirit inside of us, and we now have a new quality of life, a new identity, and are a totally new person in our spirits. The rest of the Christian life is learning in your soulish mental realm what has taken place in your spirit. The truth is, one third of your salvation is over when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord. Your spirit becomes completely changed. It is the exact same spirit you will have throughout eternity. It already has love, joy, peace, and is full of the presence of God. There is no lack or inadequacy in your spirit, but you have to perceive that, which is the reason studying the Word of God is so vital to the Christian life. You are a totally brand new person, but until you get knowledge, you won't change. Victory in the Christian life comes when you are able to look into the Word which is spirit and life. See who you are, see what God has done, and begin to believe it. Let us now take this opportunity to pause and reflect on the lesson by considering some questions. Suggested scripture readings will first be read, followed by the question to be answered. A pause is then recommended to allow time to meditate on the scripture as an individual or to discuss as a group and formulate an answer. Finally, the suggested answer will be given. We read 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Question. If anyone be in Christ, they are what? Answer. A new creation. 
question. What happened to the old things? Answer. They are gone. Question. What things have become new? Answer. All things. And now we read Ephesians two verses one to five. And you, he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh. And of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of His great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Question: What was your condition? Before you were born again or made alive. Answer: I was dead in trespasses and sins. Question: As an unbeliever, how did you walk or live? Answer: I followed the ways of the world. I obeyed the devil, the prince of the power of the air. And I lived in the spirit of disobedience. Question: What is God rich in? Answer: Mercy. Question: Why is God so merciful? Answer: Because of His great love for us. Question: What did God do for us? While we were still dead in trespasses and sins, answer made us alive together with Christ. Question: How did God save us? Answer: By His grace. We read one Corinthians six verses nine to ten. Do you not know? That the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Question. Can you relate with any of these descriptions on this list? Answer: Yes. We read 1 Corinthians 6 verse 11, and such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Question. Is the word "were" a past, present, or future condition? Answer: Past. Question: When you became born again, what three things happened to you? Answer: You were washed, made holy, justified, made righteous before God. We read one Corinthians six verse seventeen, but he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with Him. Question: He that is joined unto the Lord is what with Him? Answer: One spirit. Thank you for joining me and taking part in our lesson. This lesson is one of many steps on a learning pathway, taking you deeper into discipleship and relationship with the Lord. And now, stay tuned for our next lesson.